All right, here we have a lot of Asus laptops that came in from one customer for repair. Every single one of them does not power on. How many laptops do we have? All of them are the same, same model. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to be working on one here, 11, and Big Boss is disassembling another one, 12. I want to make sure I have the right count in case the customer is watching. He's not going to tell me I miscounted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 units. Uh, what model is this? I think this is the Acer A315-23. A315-23. We already fixed three units. One of them was a charging port issue. Two of them were MOSFET related. And one of them I did not touch because of bug infestation. I was working on the board and I saw half the roach is under this cover and the other half is exposed. The roach looks dead, but I do not want to work on it. I do not want to have to deal with bug infested motherboards. They have that special scent that I hate. And when we apply heat to the board, that scent is going to be magnified and I do not want to have to deal with it. Even though the board may be fixable, I just chose not to work on it. Maybe I'll give it another chance. I don't know. I'll wear some gloves and I'll wear a mask and see if I can work on it. But for now, we're going to be working on this one. And I'll try and see if we can include more than one board repair. Right now, if you look at the board, it looks something like this. The charging cable plugs in here. And we want to look for the power MOSFETs. We have two of them right here. Okay, let's take a look. I want to inspect at the MOSFET area and see what's going on. Meter in diode mode. 0 0.64 reading. Here we're going to get something in the mega ohms or OL. We're getting OL. We're going to have about 2 voltage drop here. And do we have a short on the gate? No. Do we have a short on this gate? No. Do we have a short at the drain? Oh, and look at that. We have a short here at the drain. Right now, what we're going to do is inject one volt using our voltage injection tool to the shorted area of the MOSFET and monitor the board under a thermal cam and see what gets hot. In the past couple of videos, I mentioned that we have the voltage injection boxes back in stock. It's not the same model. It's a different one. There's a shortage on those voltage injection tools, even the ones that we got. We were able to get our hands on 50 pieces and they promised that they will send us more in the future. Right now we have about maybe 20 left. So if you're in the market looking to buy one, you can log into our website and we should have in stock as of now. We're going to set volts to one. And we have people in the comments, they ask if I limit my current. I never touch the current. I do not limit the current. It's currently at 10 amps. I do not limit the current because I do not need to limit the current. When we are injecting voltage, we are injecting voltage for about 5 seconds, 10 seconds. It doesn't matter. If you plan to keep the probe on that shorted area of the MOSFET for one hour, then maybe it matters. But 10 seconds, 20 seconds, it doesn't matter. Even if the box is drawing 10 amps, 15 amps, it doesn't matter. So I never have to adjust my current. And that's why the mechanic voltage injection tool does not have a current limiter. We're going to inject voltage right here and we're going to monitor the board under a thermal cam to see what gets hot on the board. Just need to connect the camera to the HDMI switcher so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay. And let's go to manual mode. We are injecting one volt at the shorted area of the MOSFET. And I see 1.4 amps being drawn by the board. And I see something right here. But the heat is diffused. That tells me that the short is coming from back of the board and not from the front. The heat spot will appear more sharp and vivid if it's coming from the front. Okay, so I just took the probe off the MOSFET and it's cooling back down. Let's try this one more time. I'm injecting one volt. And look at that. So something is getting hot right here. Right there. Heat is coming from this spot. 
since the heat spot is diffused, it's not sharp or vivid, I have a strong reason to believe that the short is coming from back of the board. Let's see what's on back of the board. We have some caps here. You know what? We may have to apply voltage again at the shorted area of the MOSFET and we're going to flip the board and see what's getting hot on the back. So we're going to have to inject voltage at the shorted area of the MOSFET while holding the board and holding the probe. And some people suggested that I can solder a wire here to just connect it to the probe. I do not want to solder any wires right now. Okay. It can be done, but I do not want to do it. I do not want to solder wires just to inject voltage. So I have voltage injected and we see 1.3 amps being drawn and our ground probe just let loose. Let's see what's getting hot on the board. Right there. Right there. Okay. So right over here. So the heat spot is coming from here. It's coming from this area. It could be one of the caps or it could be this IC. One of the two. We can start with the capacitors. Since we only have two caps, then it's very easy to just remove them one by one. If we had something like 10 caps here or 20 caps, then I would use the atomizer, apply some flux powder and see what melts first. But right now we only have two caps, so it doesn't make sense. I'm going to use my hot tweezers along with hot air. Those are big caps and hot air will just make it a lot easier to remove the cap. I can do it with hot tweezers only, but to speed up the process, let's do it using both. We're going to start with this one, the cap that is the closest to the chip, and see, do we still have a short? Meter in diode mode, and we no longer have a short. I mean, right now I'm assuming that we had a short here. I did not measure the cap before I removed it, but what we can do is I can put the meter in continuity mode. Continuity mode and we can test the cap. If it's shorting out, if it's continuous, then the cap is definitely bad. And look at that. The cap is acting as a line. And we can tell the cap is bad. Look at this. Look at this. It was not showing from the top, but bottom of the cap is gone. See, I knew it. I knew the cap that is closest to the chip is what's bad. And how did I know that? How? Right, and let's grab another cap. What we're going to do is prep the board first. Add some solder onto the pads. Fume extractor on. And maybe we can brighten the picture a bit. The light. And I have a humongous tip here. Let me switch to something smaller. Just a tiny bit. We do not need a lot. That's it, job is done. We are done. If everything is good, that laptop should turn on. And we're gonna move on to working on another one. Okay, let's flip the board and see if we still have a short. At the drain of the power MOSFET. 
right here. Fume extractor off. Meter in diode mode. And we no longer have a short. We are reading 0.47 voltage drop, and that's perfect. Awesome. The job is done. I'm going to give this to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and I'll be back to finish the video. Okay, the laptop is working, and I found one more. If the customer is watching, he was probably pissed off when I said that we had 12 that came from him. We have one more, 13, not 12. Okay, and this one is working. Is it still on? Right there. All right. Maybe we can do one more. I have another board here. And we're gonna work on this one next. Let's see, what's wrong with this one? We're gonna measure at the power MOSFETs here and see if it's the same issue. Meter in diode mode and let's test the drain. Do we have a short? And no, we do not have a short, so it's a different problem. We have 0 0.47 voltage drop, just like the reading that we got on the other one after we fixed it. And that's a good indication that the MOSFETs are good. I'm gonna measure drain to gate, no short. To source, no short. And then I'm gonna measure from here to here, no short. No short, no short, and no short. So we're going to assume the MOSFETs are good. That one is a bit tricky because MOSFETs are measuring good. You know what? Let me get the charger, and I'm going to plug it in and see is 19 volts going in. It doesn't make sense to troubleshoot further if 19 volts is not even going in. Let's plug the charging cable. Charging cable is in and let's measure at the MOSFETs in voltage mode. We're going to measure at the source. I mean, drain of the first MOSFET and we should have 19 volts. And right now I am getting zero volts. Huh. Zero volts here. So voltage is not even going through it could be a problem with the connector what if we measure at the connector side nothing zero volts zero volts let me unplug the cable what if we measure for a short on the connector itself or on the drain of the first mosfet Look at that, we have a short here. We do not have a short here at the second one, but we have a short at the first one. And that short is likely coming from the charging connector itself. Let's measure here, you see? We're gonna take a look at the connector and see how it looks like from the inside. How does it look like from the inside? Yeah, I think round may be touching the pin. Look at this. I think that piece should be pointing upwards and not flat down like you see it. See how that piece is touching the pin? So the short is coming from here. I do not have charging ports for this laptop. We would have to order them. But what if we can fix what we already have here? I do not know if I can reach inside and pull that piece upwards. I do not know if that's possible. The connector is one of the smallest of all laptops, smaller than the blue HP adapter, smaller than anything I've seen. Is it possible to reach in? It's going to be impossible under the camera. Hmm. And it's deep too. 
I'm not going to be able to do it under the microscope. We may have to change that connector. And no way, I cannot see it under the magnifier. I cannot see it. I mean, we're going to have to change the connector. No way. We're going to have to change the connector because it's impossible to go inside and separate those two. Let me remove the connector and see if we still have a short. If not, then problem is the connector. Look at this. I do see a crack in the connector right there. You see it? Look at this. So we know the connector is bad. I do see a crack right here. Let's go ahead and desolder the connector. To make the job easier, I'm going to apply low melt solder and we should be able to remove that connector like butter. And we're going to do the same here. And the same here. And the same right here. And now we should be able to remove that connector. And just like that. Thank you very much, low melt solder. And now we're going to measure the center pin. Do we still have a short? Meter in diode mode. The short is gone. We are getting 0.5 voltage drop and that's perfect. So the problem is the connector. The problem is the connector. All right. Zero point five six voltage drop. We do not have a connector in stock for this laptop. Unfortunately, we're going to have to order one. And we'll finish this board after we get the connector. But we know that the problem is the connector. I don't know if we should do one more. Oh, Big Boss already disassembled another one. Maybe we'll do one more in this video. And I'm going to give this one back to him. Okay, so let's work on this board. I think three boards in one video is enough. We're going to take a look at the MOSFETs. And let's measure the drain here. We do not have a short. And uh, what about here? We do not have a short. So we know we do not have a problem with the connector and we know we do not have a short circuit on the board. Meter in continuity mode. No short, no short, none. Gate is not shorting to drain, source. Okay, so we're going to assume the MOSFETs are good. Our connector is good. It's not shorting out. And the left side of the board is not shorting out as well because we are not reading a short at the current sense resistor that we see here. 0 0.47 voltage drop. Let me plug the charging cable. And we're going to see, are we getting 19 volts in? Meter in voltage mode. We're going to measure the drain of the first MOSFET here. Right there. And what? Uh, we have zero volts. <laughs> what is going on? Zero volts. Is it a connector issue also? Let's measure the connector in diode mode.
and we do not have a short. We already measured for a short and we do not have a short at the connector. We are reading 0.63 voltage drop, but voltage is not going in. So it's very likely that it's a connector issue. What else would cause voltage not to go in? If the connector is not shorting and the MOSFET is not shorting, it's a connector issue. 105% it's a connector issue. So far, three laptops with connector issues, two of them with MOSFET issues, and one of them with a short. That's it. I think we're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.